right good morning good morning fellow traders and welcome to today's live trading session as you know today is april 27th 2022 and you know we're going to stick to the same regimen um as usual what we typically do we look for day trading opportunities during the first part of today's trading session and then after that um we will look for uh well you know we want to talk about what's happening geopolitically um do a little bit of fundamental analysis and um intermarket analysis and then after that we'll do some top-down analysis just to share with you some high probability setups that may take place later on in the week but um i hope you guys had a great weekend um i know uh, we didn't meet on monday but um this is the first day we're meeting for this week so i'm pretty excited about getting right back into the groove of things and looking at these charts again but yeah good morning adam good morning rob um good morning greg good morning danny thank you guys and good morning everyone who is in attendance and even those who couldn't um make it i know some of you guys will be watching this later um so um good day to you as well but um i guess we can get going on today's day trading opportunities now today was actually quite different than the past two days i know um as you as some of you guys know um especially if you're part of the group uh, we had a nice day trading opportunity on monday and then um tuesday was a great day as well it was a lot of movement um a lot of activity in the markets and um today of course which is wednesday we do see some movement in the market but there's a level of ambiguity on uh, what we should be doing but what i'm going to do is share with you a few areas that i'm looking at at the moment and um you know with these setups there's there's reasons to sort of be skeptical with with a few of the setups that i'm going to talk about today so today could be one of those days where if you wanted to you can just be patient on the skyline and wait for everything to align however there will be times when you will miss out on some good setups if you do wait for everything to align perfectly because sometimes the market or with way prices moving things may not line up exactly the way your plan may want it to line up as far as you know with these trading opportunities but you know you should still get in if you no price action if and if you know how price is behaving but anyways let's look at this first setup um right now we're looking at the euro pound eur gbp the euro pound and we're currently looking at the one hour chart and for those who may not know whenever we talk about day trading setups we're primarily focused on the one hour time frame um that's the time frame that we're primarily focused on when it comes to day trading opportunities um sometimes we may look for setups on a 15 minute but um primarily on the one hour and then you know we look for setups also on the four hour and daily but those are more like swing trading setups but um anyways let's look at what we see right here so right now we're looking at the one hour chart of euro pound and let me ask you guys a question especially those that's been with us for a while are we in a bearish environment or bullish environment that's one question or you can answer it all by asking or answering this question should we be looking to buy or sell right now on euro pound based on how things are looking on the one hour chart okay so then um joyce joe said bears danny said buy dan said bear greg said sell joseph sell and um yeah okay what we want to do right now is look for selling opportunities based on the strength and momentum of this correction to the downside uh, what we see right here is that price actually broke through this key structural level right here um let me just mark this right here broke through this key structural level right here to the downside and we have some momentum to the downside and what we want to do is wait for price to correct up here before we look for an opportunity to sell and then if we do sell we may target this area right here but you know we want to stay on the side of selling since this is a day trading setup and since we primarily look for setups on the one hour we want to look for a sell right now but um you know and you know for one we see price action is to the downside 
uh, right now, the uh, recent price action. Also, we see the 20 SMA line. This blue cyan line represents the 20 simple moving average line is sloping to the downside. So then we want to look for an opportunity to sell on a pullback in price, on a pullback to structure resistance, you know, et cetera. But um, what we need to do before we do anything, we need to see if there is something that we call directional confluence. We need to make sure that there's multiple time frames supporting a decision in the downward direction. Remember, we're trying to look for a sell opportunity. So then we want to see if there's other time frames that support that bias. So then what we're going to do from here, we're going to um, jump up to the four hour chart. We know the one hour is bearish. Four hour is um now is the four hour looking bullish or bearish? Let me ask you guys that question. Is the four hour bullish or bearish? Yep. Okay, Rob said bullish, right? Yep, bullish, right? So then we see a level of co contradiction between the one hour and the four hour. So then the four hour is bullish. Um, let's do one more. Let's see about the daily. Okay, so then right now we're looking at the daily. And um, on this daily pair right now, I mean, on this daily time frame right now, what we can assume is that um, the market is really in consolidation, to be honest with you. It's really moving back and forth between support and resistance, going up, going down, pushing up, going down, pushing up. Going down, pushing up. So it's in consolidation. So, you know, on this time frame, we're sort of neutral. So then right now, we don't have a clear winner as far as bias. But what we're going to do is simply go off of what we see right now on this daily time frame. What we can see is that price is hitting this area of structure resistance. Look left, structure leaves clues, as some of you guys may know. Um, you know, we see, you know, resistance right here, price hit this area and also pay attention to, you know, when, you know, when it comes to the stochastics, especially when it's range bound, when it's trapped in consolidation, you want to make sure that it's either overbought or oversold. In this case, since it's hidden resistance, you want to make sure it's near oversold. And that's exactly, overbought. yeah, overbought. And that's exactly what we see right here is that, um, stochastic is overbought and, um, we can see it on these other times. Uh, right here, we can see when stochastics hit this area, it was overbought. We saw a nice slide to the downside. Um, same right here, it was overbought, saw a nice push to the downside. And we're seeing the same thing right now. Price hit this resistance area and stochastic is overbought. So then what we want to do is look for an opportunity to sell euro pound based on this repeatable pattern that we saw multiple times in this particular pair on the daily time frame, whenever it hit this hits this zone, whenever price reaches and tests the zone, and whenever stochastic is overbought, you can either use the stochastics or RS, RSI, whatever suits you. But um, once we see it overbought on our momentum indicator, then um, that's a good, you know, reason to really change our bias and start um, looking for sell opportunities. But yeah, that's exactly what we want to do on this particular pair. So then going back to the one hour time frame, um, we can see here that, um, of course, price is testing structure right here. Uh, let me just draw this in real quick. So we see that we have this structure area right here. Uh, let me change the color. But um, what we want to see is maybe price pull back and retest another structure level. So again, when we do sell, we want to place our orders around where? Support or resistance? I'll give you guys a few seconds. This is basics. I know this is basics. We, we uh, pretty much repeat this stuff over and over, but it's very important for us to really get these concepts down. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Resistance for sell. Okay, let me take a sip right quick. All right. So, yeah, we want to look for opportunities to sell at resistance, right? So then right here, we need to figure out where is resistance on this chart. So um, there's a few areas that we could locate. For one, 
as you said, you know, or as we talked about, you can look to the left and you can see certain key structural levels. So um, I don't know if you can identify the prices on these. Okay, Adam said the 8440 um, level. Yep, and we do see something there. Now, let me just drop a line right here. 8440 right here. But um, what else do we see? Like, especially when you look at this move to the downside right here, what else do we see on this slide lower? Just to give you guys a clue. Okay, 84. Okay, yeah. What else do we see on this slide? For I know um, Dan said 84.10. 84.10 is, you know, down here where we do have our support. Yeah, and if you guys want to scap this move to the upside, you can if you want. Because, you know, what we're going to expect is a move to the upside. But um, typically, you know, I don't do that. I wait for price to um, come to a particular area. And then um, I actually, you know, trade in the direction of my bias. But yeah so you know we want to look for a, a, a sell opportunity now another area that you could pay attention to is what okay yep greg said it hesitation candle right here another name for it is hidden structure right here what we see right here is this green doji Spinning top. Indecision type candle sandwiched in between these red bearish candles. So then what this tells us that what we have here is hidden structure right in this area right here. So what I'm going to do is draw this right here. Just draw a zone from here all the way maybe to the middle of this box right around here. And this is where I'm assuming price is going to go right into this area right here where we have this hidden structure around here somewhere in this zone or this area so to make a long story short what we're going to do we're going to simply wait for price push up and retest this area of resistance and then from there we will look for an opportunity to sell on um bearish confirmation and what we can do is um target the structure area down here or the lows but in either case, we want to look for a sell opportunity once price reaches this area. And then we can take two targets. We can take our first target right around here in this area. Let me change the color. And then our second target could be somewhere around this zone, you know, right here. Um, this could be our second target, but, you know, we'll be looking for a sell opportunity for this particular pair. Uh, we'll be waiting for price to come to us. So um, let me delete um, some of this stuff because I know this could be um, somewhat confusing. Well, no, I'll leave it here. Um, I think this makes um, sense, some sense. But uh, what we want to do, we want to look for a sell opportunity. We want to wait for price to retrace up into this zone where we have structure and we where we have this hidden, hidden um, resistance or hidden structure right here. And then from there, we'll look to sell on bearish confirmation once price re reaches this reaches this zone, which is between 84.38 and um, around 84.50, you could say. All right. So, yeah, we'll just wait for that to happen before we actually get involved and do anything. <clears throat> yeah, we want the trade to, to come to us. But um, yeah, I want to touch on this particular trade with the euro pound. And how really it supports really um, some of the underlying fundamental themes uh, between both currencies. Because one thing we do know is that with the euro, with the ECB, the ECB is one of the only few major central banks that's sort of dragging its feet on its um, stance on tightening rates or uh, becoming more hawkish. It's it's sort of leaning in the direction of being a hawk or you know, being concerned about inflation and wanting to, you know, hike rates, but they're sort of dragging their feet saying that they won't hike rates until they're done with their asset purchasing program, which we know ends uh, towards the third quarter or towards the end of the third quarter. So 
with that being said, you know, all the other central banks like the Fed, the BOE, they're going to have a head start on the ECB when it comes to raising rates. So just on that interest rate differential alone, like the euro is expected to weak in compare to weaken in comparison to you know currencies that are actually in a tightening phase or they've already started their rate hiking cycle. So then that's one thing I wanted to point out. And I could go a little bit deeper and show you why that's the case, even if we look at sovereign bond yields. And if we look at the euro yields, like um, I don't know, Melva, are you still uh yeah. because you know I just kind of want to do this real briefly and then I'm gonna have Melvin. Um, continue to look for some more day trading opportunities. But if we go to, I'm just going to go to the uh, two year. Let, let's see. I'm just going to be the euro sovereign bond yields. And then we're going to look at that. And you can see here that it's still fairly weak. Um, it's far below um, where their rate target expectations are, uh, where inflation is. So it's, you know, it's still below 1%. And uh, let's, um, okay, so then I'm just going to, you know, put that right here. And then we're going to open up um, the, the pound uh, to, um, for the uh, guilt. Now, let's see right here. 10 year guilt right here for the United Kingdom. That's for the pound. And we can see here that the rate is at 1.81. So you can see that the current. But no, this is the 10 year. Let me do <laughs> two year. Yeah, my bad. Let's go for zero two right here. But you can still see that even for the two year, um, you can see that for um, the 10, the two year guilt, the yield on the two year guilt is at 1.511. And we could see that the yield for the euro um government bond a two-year yield is at 0 0.123 so of course right now there's going to be more of a it's more attractive to rotate into the pound than stay in the euro like the pound has that extra carry that advantage that um even if you was to trade the euro pound there would be more it'll be more favorable for you to sell the pound or sell the euro, excuse me, <laughs> and purchase the uh, the pound. But just on that yield differential alone. Now, this is just nominal yields. This is not even real rates. But you can see how, of course, current like in currency trading, you're going to always want to trade in favor of the currency that has the higher interest rate. That's going to be the one that's going to always be, and and you know have more of a demand, or there's going to be more speculative interest for that particular. Uh, that's the reason why I was saying that in this particular case with the euro pound, uh, fundamentally, uh, due to just, you know, rate differentials, uh, policy divert, well, I guess you could call it policy divergence, but not really since they are moving in this, you know, in the same direction. But the fact that the euro, or the ECB is lagging behind and tightening their rate and, um, you know, um, ending their asset purchasing program. We know that th those yields are low in European sovereign bonds. Those bond yields are low. And of course, all the other currencies, especially some of the major ones, their, their rates are moving to the upside as they're pricing in inflation higher, interest rate expectations. So then that's going to always benefit those currencies more. But yeah, so then that's why, you know, so I just kind of wanted to point that out. And I didn't mean to take up too much time, but yeah, I know Melvin, he has a few more uh, currency pairs. Um, he well, wants to cover yeah, it. yeah. And before I do that, I want to set a few alerts, uh, you know, just in case um, price does push up here while we're busy on our webinar. Um, let me do this. OK, let me go right here. OK, so then typically what I do, I'll place an alert right at the thirty eight point two to notify me when price reaches this area. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And we're just going to place an alert right here at the thirty eight point two. And, um, you know, it's not too far from our structure. So then let me um, do that right quick. And let's say crossing horizontal way. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is put a, put some notes. So today is the 27th. We go 27th, and then we can uh, and do this. We can say price is testing 
3A2. And then this is when I typically drop down to a trigger time frame. Drop down to trigger. Look to sell. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think someone may have their mic on. So if you can um, um, put it on mute, that would be perfect. All right. Okay. This is something else. All right. But um, that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess we can move on. So if we don't have any questions, we can move on to our next setup, which um, is quite similar to this one, but um, it's the Euro Kiwi, E U R N Z D, Euro Kiwi. Okay. So, um, all right. So, right now we're looking at um, the Euro Kiwi and we're currently looking at the one hour time frame. This one is kind of, uh, I'm not too confident in this one. Uh, we have a lot of hidden structure, right? You know, in this move to the downside, it's not as smooth, but um, we can still look for a potential opportunity to um, possibly short this pair, even though price at the moment is testing an area of support right here. We can look historically, we can see that price was test or is currently testing or, you know, right around the area where we, you know, no buyers are positioned. So then that's something to be mindful of. So then we don't know for certain how this is going to play out. Let's, um, let's move on from here. I'm not going to, um, well, let me come back to this one. I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to look to see how the other ones, um, we have, you know, how the other ones look on our, um, on our list, on our watch list, and then um, go from there. Let's go. NZD, JPY, or Kiwi Yen. Okay. Yeah, so then for this one right here, uh, this is sort of interesting, but, you know, we had this set up, this sort of like reversal setup, you could say. Um, let me ask you guys a question. Based on what we know about these classical chart patterns, what reversal setup um do you think took place based on what we're observing now with price action um i'll give you guys a few seconds this is for those who's been with us and even if you haven't been with us for a while you shouldn't see it okay so ryan said inverted head and shoulders adam said inverted head and shoulders and um yes we do see that uh, what we see right here is um left shoulder head and right shoulder right here um, this is what we currently see right now on the Kiwi Yen. So then, you know, we want to look for an opportunity to buy. Um, and there's a few reasons why. But, you know, for this one, um, we have to be extra careful because if we do see price push all the way down and break this low right here, then it violates that whole bullish price action. And we will not look for an opportunity to buy if we see price break below this low right here. But um, as long as price is above this structure area where the right shoulder is, you could say, or this structure area, let me just draw this in right here. As long as price is above this area, then we can look for a potential opportunity to buy on a dip in price. However, we have to make sure there is something that we like to call directional confluence. We need to make sure that multiple time frame support a movement to the upside. And like I said, like usually we don't like to place trades that don't have directional confluence, where there's at least more than one time frame supporting a bias or supporting a particular direction. So let me just show you what I mean. So then on a the one hour, based on what we see right here, uh, we're in a bullish environment, uh, price broke, close above this um, structure or this, this high right here, this neckline area right here. Let me um, change this to pink. But we saw price break and expand to the upside. And now we're in this correction mode to the downside. So, so price created a higher high. Now we're waiting for price to correct and form that higher low. But, um, you know, as you can see, we're in a bullish environment on a one hour. 
Now let's jump up to the four hour. Four hour. We're definitely in a what environment on the four hour? Bullish or bearish? Are we in a bullish or bearish environment? Yep, bearish, exactly. 20 SMA sloping downwards. We see price forming lower lows and lower highs. So then that contradicts our um, buy setup on, on the one hour. But And what about the daily? Okay, the daily also is looking somewhat um, bearish as well. You know, with price, you know, creating this strong impulse leg to the downside. And um, yeah. It is looking bearish. However, um, you know, what we can assume is that price is going to push to the upside and correct higher and um, then, you know, form another sell opportunity down here. So then based on that notion alone, we can assume that price may want to correct a little bit higher, even though there is no directional confluence based on, you know, what we've seen on those three different time frames. Typically we want to see at least two of those time frames support a bias to the upside, but in this case we don't. Which means that price could very well um come all the way down, test the lows and then come up. But um what we're going to do is assume that price is going to push to the upside and you know we have our reasons. I don't, I usually don't like I don't want to do like too much technical analysis, but um as you guys know uh, what we see here is that price is testing the 127 fib um extension level right in this area this this level called the 127.2 which is a key target that a lot of people like to use and we can see that price reacted to this level also 8350 uh, which is a strong level strong number level uh, right around here and i'm pretty sure there is structure if we went to the weekly chart i'm pretty sure we'll find it right in this area let me just see let me go to the weekly and let's see what we see on the weekly um well not well well yeah right here maybe um yeah maybe right here is okay let me see something i'm just gonna drop a few lines boom uh and right here but yeah okay yeah it's, yeah it's this first one so then yeah right here is testing this weekly structure level uh right here and this is what it's responding to so what we can assume here is that price may correct a little bit higher and that's the reason why we're going to take or consider taking this buy opportunity on a dip in price on the one hour chart so you know we'll see so all right so right now we're waiting for price to correct somewhat and uh, what we want to do is identify where support or where structure is and you know i think we already did it here but let me move it a little bit higher right around here at the midpoint of the what what is this candle called again a hesitation candle this is what we call it hidden structure so if price corrects to this area which is what you know we're going to expect if it corrects down here then um as soon as it corrects into this area we'll look for a buy opportunity on bullish confirmation yeah, I know Ryan said dynamic resistance. Yes, we do with the 20 simple moving average line, which is also called the 20 hour moving average. Uh, we have, you know, dynamic resistance there as well. So then overall, uh, what we do have, uh, you know, we have a number of factors that contribute to, you know, this setup. I mean, we can even add more evidence. We can even say, hey, let's draw in a Fibonacci from the low all the way up to the high. And we can see that right around the 50 is, you know, where this area is. So then we have confluence, you know, in this area with the 20 hour moving average, the hesitation or hidden structure right here and the 50. 
So then this is a good area to look for a buy around, mainly due to all of that structural confluence, you know, in that area. So again, if price reaches this zone right here, then what we want to do is look for a buy on bullish confirmation. And um, what we can do is we can, um, our target can be based on this move right here from the head to the neck, you could say, of this um, reversal pattern. And that could take us up to this area where, you know, we may want to consider looking for a short, you know, after price reaches this area. But um, yeah, we'll keep our eye on this one right here. Um, this is something that um, we'll definitely keep our eye on. But yeah. We're looking for a buy opportunity somewhere within this zone. However, once price reaches this zone, what we're going to do is drop down to a trigger time frame to execute our position. Now, for those who do know, who's been with us for a while, what trigger time frame would we drop down to um, once price reaches this area of support? What will be our trigger time frame? Which means before we execute the, the trade, we need to drop down to a trigger time frame to see if it gives clues of a bullish push to the upside okay so i know ryan said 15 minutes Stuart said 15 minutes joe said 15 minute yeah and the yeah all of you guys are correct yep 15 minute or 10 minute yep exactly danny's correct as well 10 minute as well we can use the 10 minute as a matter of fact um really you can use the 15 minute 10 minute or five minute um it's up to you but um of course, it all depends on the nature of the correction. And um, I'll probably go through an example and show you one um, maybe in the past. Because there are times when you go, drop down to the 15 minute and there's times when you go to the 10 minute or five minute. It all depends on the nature of that correction lower. So in this case right here, we see a pretty quick, um, strong correction lower, it looks like. So then uh, we may want to do... Um, something like maybe the five minute or 10 minute time frame for our trigger. All right. But yeah. So yeah, Kiwi Yen, we're looking for a buy once it reaches this zone. All right. Yeah. I think Marvin has something he wants to share. Yeah. Like since we're, you know, right now talking about the Kiwi Yen, I just kind of wanted to, you know, to um, just introduce this briefly uh, for those of you guys that may be trading any type of Yen cross. Like today, um, or really it, it'll be tomorrow because it will be the Asian session. But later tonight, if you're in the U.S., it'll be later tonight. Um, you know, the Bank of Japan will be having their monetary policy meeting and um, that may affect. And in some way, it will yeah, it will affect, you know, price action in this pair. So then I just kind of wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. Like if you do execute this buy and you're in this trade and it ends up um, not reaching its target. Then just be mindful that you know later on tonight um, they will be you know making an announcement, and I'm not expecting them to make any changes to their monetary policy. I'm not expecting them to hike rates at this one. If anything, it's going to be more of a poignant just um, defense of their QQE program or their QQE yield curve control uh, mechanism that they've been pretty much doing for the past few years. So then uh, I know we haven't talked about that and. You know, eventually we're going to have to do a separate fundamental analysis webinar where we talk about the difference between QE and QQE. But QQQE is just a combination of two mechanisms is quantitative easing and qualitative easing merged together with yield curve control. So, um, yeah, so then pretty much they're going to just probably continue to do that and continue to keep um, interest rates in negative territory. So uh, that's going to be interesting, but I just kind of wanted to just let you guys know that the Bank of Japan is meeting and that will affect uh, most of our yen crosses. So, so yeah. Yep. Yep, definitely. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, wait for this correction into this zone and, you know, we'll see what happens. For all you know, price could actually push all the way down and retest these lows again before pushing higher again. And uh, I have a feeling that it may do that. However, we want to be prepared for whatever happens. Because remember, trading is all about adapting to what price gives you at that moment. You know, and you have to have various plans. You know, you have to have an if-then 
syntax or if then like you have to trade with conditional statements so if price comes down here to the zone and if, we, and if we see price bounce and it looks like it wants to push higher then we'll look to buy however if price does this then we'll do this you have to be willing to adapt to whatever price fluid mm -hmm. price gives you have to be fluid and not static uh, when it comes to trading so you know that's something you know for you to bear in mind because um oftentimes you know we set setups we have these setups and you know just because it goes to this level doesn't mean we're going to take it you know that's one thing that you have to understand we have to see something take place first before we do it if we don't then um there's a possibility that price could you know break to the downside and then you may get something like this to happen this type of movement but you know you got to be prepared for whatever comes but um anyways let me drop down to the trigger time frame um to see what's going on let me first go to the 15 minute See how that's looking? Okay, this is the 15 minute. Um, okay, for this one, I'm gonna go down to the 10 minute. Let me see how the 10 minute is looking. Okay, yep. Okay, I like the 10 minute a bit better. Either the 10 minute or the five minute is what um, you should look at uh, for your trigger time frame. Okay, where would stop loss and target be if the setup occurs? Good question. So yeah, that has a lot to do with uh, what you see on a trigger time frame. But um, let me just say this, okay, for those who's been with us for a while, you know what we typically do when we wait for price to correct into our particular zone. Now we're looking for a buy here, but before we do that, we have to see something unique about price action. What do we typically wanna see prior to price reaching this zone? Let me just ask that question. Prior to price reaching this zone right here, what do we need to, need to typically see? And um, this is for those who's been with us. Uh, I know some of you guys are new. You may not know this, but there is something that we look at on this pullback before we even consider buying. Okay. Yeah. Greg said three-way pullback. And that is the case. That is the truth. Um, what we want to look for is an ABC pullback on a smaller trigger time frame. Yep, Elliott Wave, exactly, Danny. We just use that one simple component of Elliott Wave Theory. Like, Elliott Wave Theory, most of it doesn't really work. The only thing that works is the three-wave pullback. So then that works on the trigger time frame. Whenever you drop down to a trigger time frame, you typically wanna see something like this, like a leg A, leg b and leg c and then right when it reaches this zone then that's when you prepare for your buy in you'll typically see price push up to the upside but if there's one thing that elliot got right from his theory is the theory or notion of the three-wave pullback actually it happens the overall majority of the time you can look at any pullback drop down to a trigger time frame and you'll see that three-wave correction so then that's what we typically want to see you know, in this, um, on the trigger time frame, um, before we actually look for a potential, um, buy, which, um, I I'll probably, get, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show you an example of one in a little bit, but yeah, this is what we typically want to see. But after price creates that three-way pullback, like, let's just say that price does what we're seeing right now, drawn in yellow. So, Let's just assume that we want to look for an opportunity to get in. We'll wait for price to, let's just assume that this is structure right here, even though, you know, price is still pushing down and price responds to this area. You want to see price break up. And as soon as price breaks up and closes above this level, then that's when we have bullish confirmation. After that, we'll wait for price to retest this area. And then from there, we'll enter our buy with our stop behind this low right here. That's how we typically set our stops. We always set up, set it below that structure that's formed on the trigger time frame. That way, we get a good reward to risk ratio. Uh, we we um, identify our stops based on um, the structure that's created on our trigger time frame. So, if this is the case, let's just assume this is the case, and we decide to get in. We we can um, enter like a long right here stop would be right behind the swing low that's assuming that this area is the swing low and then our target will be um up here or it could be you know based on 
Fibonacci extension, whatever you want to use for your target. Like if we're assuming that the fib, uh, that the correction goes all the way down here, then um, our target could be at the 127, you know, right around here. So then that gives us a 2.28 reward to risk ratio. If we were to do that, you know, if price was to give us something like this, where we have leg A, leg B, and leg C, and then we just wait for price to break this low. That gives us bullish confirmation. Wait for the pullback to retest this area. What was once resistance becomes support. And then um, we'll enter our buy. You know, does that make sense? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, how many points below the low um, should the stop be? Well, you know, typically I know some people use like an ATR length, you know, distance, you know, below the swing low. But I know for us, like for me in particular, um, I just put it maybe a, a pip or two pips or at least a spread, a spread distance below the low. Um, just to play it safe, but really the the thing I'm most most interest interested in is really reward to risk ratio. So then, if I have a solid reward to risk ratio that I'm comfortable with, then you know it doesn't matter. Like even for this 2.28, well, you know I typically want to do a two to one reward to risk. So then I can afford pulling this a little bit back to you know an area to you know where I can have a two to one reward to risk, which gives me some cushion behind this swing low but um, I'm more concerned about that and oftentimes once you get the bullish confirmation you know rarely do, do we see price really go all the way down and um, test the highs or test the lows in this case of, of the structure that's created on the trigger time frame so yeah but you know usually I want to do a two to one reward to risk the lowest I'll do well sometimes we do like 1.4 you know I think the last trade we hit, which was on Monday was 1.44 R, you know, reward to risk. But um, typically, you know, two to one, uh, 1.75 to one, you know, 1.5 R, that's good. But, um, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. But um, I like to stay around two to one, you know, so um, that's how I usually define what my stop would be based on reward to risk ratio. And it has to be behind the swing low of, of the structure that's created. You know, I hope that makes sense, uh, Danny. Let me know if you still have questions. Uh, but, but yeah. All right. So, okay. And um, also, yeah, you guys will be getting the recording of this as well. So um, you can review this um, later on. But yeah, this is the Kiwi Yen. Um, we'll see what happens with this particular um, setup. Now, I might as well do this right now because I know I sent you guys a trade idea on Aussie yen um this may actually be a trade where we may get stopped out on this one and you know we've been on a nice run for a while like literally for a while like the last maybe 10 15 trades we've hit the target so um you know this one looks like we may not uh survive this one <laughs> it may hit the stop loss but um we're still in the trade we'll see but um let me go to it right now um and i'll tell you guys how to get in on this one but it's the aussie yen um let me do that aussie yen all right so yeah we're almost at our stop our stop is at um 91.17 so i think we're going to get stopped out on this one but um you see here we went in a little bit early but um this is based on a one hour uh, pull back at the time, um, you know, we went, we saw price react uh, with this candle and, you know, we sort of just jumped in. Um, I went in somewhat prematurely, but, um, you know, this is the reason why we should always look for that three-way pullback because um, as you guys can see on the 10-minute chart, we do see that Elliott wave three-way pullback. We see leg a leg b and leg c so you know right after leg c that's when you need to look for your opportunity to um, buy on bullish confirmation and in this case we can wait for price to you know break this structure area you know right here so even if i get stopped out i'm still going to wait for this setup right here uh, i'm just going to wait for price to break ab above this area let me just draw this break 
above it and then we're going to look for price to retest this area as support and then we can look to get in with a target let me uh do this our target well let me just go with what we have now it could go deeper i don't think we're stopped out yet which is a good thing but um we can set a target at you know the 127 um uh, fib um extension that's you know somewhere where we could um target but um it'll just be the same thing we'll place our stop right behind here yeah that's if it does go up and then our target up here so that'll still give us a 1.5 which is good but there's no guarantee that Third yeah yeah so then this is the reason why we want to wait you know wait for this price to break above this zone correct and then uh we'll look to get in so then you know as of now you know um if you guys took the trade um this one may be a loser um based on you know yeah i don't even know why it should have we should have been stopped out already but um it hasn't come up yet but um what we want to do is wait for price to expand to the upside look for the pullback and then enter our buy but yeah this c leg could actually keep going so um that's one thing that you also have to bear in mind as well is that we have this um c leg and um it can keep falling lower or it may respond to this structure area down here so you know we'll see we'll just keep an eye on it but um all right are there any questions if not then um i don't really have too much to share with you like today we didn't really see any good setups to really be confident in as far as day trading opportunities so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to pass the mic over to marvin and he's going to talk about what's been happening fundamentally in the market and then from there we're going to do some top-down analysis so all right i'm going to pass the mic over to marvin all right so um yeah i'm gonna do my best to sort of try to describe um some of the fundamental backdrop um, behind a lot of the price action there's a lot of themes that are happening simultaneously that we have to you know just keep in mind when trading and just like we told you guys before you don't have to be an expert in economics you don't have to have a phd in economics or understanding macroeconomics um you know but it's always good to at least know some of the underlying reasons behind why prices may be moving the way they are and what's really motivating market sentiment but um of course for this week of trading it's an interesting week because we've entered that communication blackout period where um after the second saturday of the month um prior to um the next federal reserve bank meeting or fomc meeting uh just the week after that saturday it, it, there's a communication blackout until the fed meets um they're going to start their meeting on next tuesday it's going to be a two-day meeting so then for this whole entire week uh, we won't hear any commentary from any of the of the federal reserve um you know board members uh regional presidents we won't be hearing any news comments or anything like their commentary to media even their lecturing circuit uh, they tend to you know withdraw from going to campuses universities and doing lectures at conferences because they don't want to influence the market um you know during this period ahead of um uh, the, the next you know policy meeting which is on next wednesday or the policy announcement i should say because it is a two-day meeting so then they don't want to interfere and influence they want to stabilize the market and allow traders to focus primarily on economic data instead of trying to prospect or trying to um, assess where interest rates are going to go or what the fed is going to say about interest rates so that's one of the reasons why they go we you know there's this communication blackout and we don't hear from any of the fed fed presidents or regional presidents but um in the midst of that like right now since we know that there's this communication blackout um of course there's a few fundamental themes or underlying themes that are going on we have the lockdowns in china which is creating supply constraint and of course that's weighing on assets and um 
you know, I mean, we really need a separate webinar alone just to discuss <laughs> all of this stuff. But we have that. Uh, we have earnings season. This is, you know, U.S. earnings season. So then, you know, there's earnings data that's coming out that uh, this week is having an impact on risk markets. And then we also have, um, of course, the geopolitical tensions with Ukraine and Russia. Um, that's still going on. But there's a lot of um, themes that are happening simultaneously that, that is affecting market sentiment. But one thing we do know, you know, of course, um, Man, there's <laughs> there's a lot of different directions I could go, but what we're going to do right now, we're going to touch on what's happening in futures markets, and then I'm going to um, touch on something else that we haven't talked about in a while. Because, like I said before, we do have a Federal Reserve announcement next week, and right now future markets are definitely pricing in uh, about nine to ten rate hikes. Um, in the market. And there's even wiggle room from some of the Fed members. And I, I can't remember one of the, I, it could either be Bullard or Evans um, stated that there's even wiggle room for a 75 basis point rate hike, which is, I mean, extremely rare because the traditional hiking um, increments is really a quarter basis points hike or 25 basis point where they'll raise the Fed funds rate only 25 basis points. But right now, with inflation uh, moving higher, with inflationary pressures, um, with what we see happening, uh, like right now, the Fed is going to feel pressure to have to be a, a more aggressive in their monetary tightening to sort of kind of help support, you know, you know, offset or curb the impact that inflation is having on the market. But um. Like, I'm not going to continue to talking about that. Let's go and look at what future markets are doing. So then right now, I'm just going to make it quick. Um, I'm just going to go to Finviz real quick, which is one of our uh, favorite sites to go to, where we can just get a quick glance and overview um, by looking at heat maps of what financial markets are doing. And as you can see on yesterday, we did have a bloody day yesterday with stocks uh, falling to the downside. Most of this was just tech driven. From the tech sector, uh, we had you know Tesla uh, fail. Um, let me see, we got it, it fell like well right here what 12, 12.18 percent. I thought it was a little bit more than that, but uh, you know just a lot of our growth based tech based stocks led the route in stock markets. There is heavy risk aversion because there's concerns oh, about global growth or growth slowing down, especially in an interest rate environment where real yields are pushing into positive territory. And, you know, when we look at real yields, that's um, the nominal yield uh, minus inflation expectations. So then when we see real yields picking up and moving to the upside, that's going to put pressure on a lot of our tech base growth-based assets, because what that means is that there's a draining of liquidity from the, from the market, there's monetary tightening, and we know that most of our tech stocks have really rallied to the upside due to just stimulus. I'm just going to be honest, just like stimulus has helped prop up many of our tech and growth-based stocks. You know, a lot of them have low margins, low return, low cash flow. Uh, just, you know, to be honest with you, like a lot of our tech companies have just really rally to the upside and, uh, and are really overinflated or overvalued. And that's primarily due to stimulus. So then we're seeing that repricing of assets as we see um, interest rates move to the upside. And, we, when we, and also when we're in this rate hiking cycle, that's going to always eventually lead to slower growth. So then, of course, we're seeing the effects of what um, pending slowing growth we have on markets. There'll be this rebalancing and this this repricing of assets. But um, but yeah, so then we saw this sell off on yesterday, but on today is kind of different for the US session. Today we're seeing some positive moves to the upside. Um, we're seeing a little bit of enthusiasm. If you look here, you can see with our future indices right here, uh, most of them are in positive territory. We see Dr. Russell um, in positive territory. And we, if we look to the right, to the right, right here, we can see that the VIX, the VIX futures is sliding lower, which is indicating that, you know, investors don't need to buy insurance or pile into the VIX as a hedge 
to sort of hedge their bets and sort of insulate themselves from risk, they can pretty much sell the VIX and rotate capital into, um, you know, equities or risk or into the risk leaning assets. So then that's what we see happening now. Uh, what's interesting is that we're seeing crude oil WTI pull back. And this is after the announcement last night where we heard, you know, statements that Russia was going to sort of uh, close out the pipeline um, to to Poland. And I think, what was it? I can't remember the other one. Do you remember? It's Poland and Romania. I, you, know, I, you know, I can't remember. But it was, it was one of those um, countries. I don't know if it's Belarus. But um, it was it was one of them that. OK, yeah, Bulgaria. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was Poland and Bulgaria. They're going to um, sort of limit oil uh, transfer, close out the pipeline to those nations uh, until they're willing to purchase oil or deal in rubles. So then, of course, Russia is doing this to sort of prop up their um, currency, the Russian ruble, and keep their economy strong. So then they're like, hey, if you want our oil, then you have to purchase it in rubles. So then, you know, so despite that news, we're still seeing you know, crude oil sell off. Like usually on something like that, we would see oil bounce and move to the upside. But at the moment, we're seeing it sell off. But um, looking at our commodities, our, our precious metals, we see gold this week. Um, I think a lot of that is due to, you know, just risk premium. And the market, I think right now, I don't know, but as for me, it seems like we're not hearing too much of the rhetoric or too many headlines coming out of Russia and Ukraine and that conflict, it seems as if the market is sort of almost trying to move on or find another story to focus on. So then, you know, gold was one of the hard assets that that really benefited from risk premium or geopolitical risk premium. So then we see that now it's pulling back as those tensions in that part of the world sort of, you know, de-escalate. So then, um, but what's interesting is that we're seeing silver move to the upside, platinum move to the upside. We're seeing gold, which is an, I'm not, not gold, but copper, which is an industrial metal, um, you know, move slightly to the downside. But um, for today, you could say the market is fairly mixed. Classes across the board, but in equities and equity futures, we're seeing this positive momentum. So then that's a, so that, that's a good sign for, um, for stocks, but uh, let's go to Forex right here. And we could hear, see that on the Forex or in the Forex market, um, our three leading currencies for today is the Australian dollar, um, the US dollar and the Kiwi or the New Zealand dollar. Even though the New Zealand dollar is, is fairly soft uh, when compared to the you know US dollar, it's you know, it's one of the, still one of the stronger currencies for today. Uh, just like Melvin mentioned earlier, markets have been moving kind of weird today. But um, we see that um, these three currencies are leading, which are more commodity linked, which is also confirming that whole risk appetite. Because whenever high beta commodity linked currencies uh, move to the upside, that can be also an indication of risk appetite in the market. So then you know, it's not strong, but it's, you know, it's showing it could be, we could be in the midst of a transition or rotation as we move closer to the Wall Street open. But um, we can see that the three weakest currencies are the ones with negative yields or low yields, which is, you know, the euro, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Um, you remember we talked about the euro primarily suffering due to its policy is dragging its feet and it has a low yield. Even if you look at the sovereign bond years, they're still low. They're not pricing in inflation or we're not seeing that, that whole inflation, um, that pickup, you know, um, seen in bond yields. But, um, and also if you think about a euro is also has a close proximity to the issues going on in Russia and Ukraine. So of course it's going to suffer from that as well, but we see, that you know these two safe haven currencies and sometimes the euro can serve as a temporary secondary safe haven we see that these currencies are selling off which is also confirming that today is a day of risk appetite or you know where investors are preferring yield instead of looking for safety or safe harbor to park their money but um but yeah this is in the forex space it's pretty mixed 
uh, for today. But uh, let's go to crypto markets and see what's happening with crypto because crypto usually has a strong correlation, you know, especially Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a strong correlation with the NASDAQ since they're both um, are swayed on the more extreme end of the risk continuum or the continuum of risk assets. And, um, you know, we'll definitely talk about that later. But of course, you can see Bitcoin is picking up. Um, you can see that it's the strongest current uh, crypto currency for today, followed by Ethereum and Litecoin. Now, this is among the majors. I'm not saying that it moved the most uh, for today uh, because we know some other altcoins are doing fairly well, even when Bitcoin and some of the major ones aren't doing good. Uh, one of them is ApeCoin, which we may take a look at later. But yeah, you can see here that, um, yeah, the cryptocurrency markets are doing fairly well for today. Um, of course, um, the one that's selling off right now is Ripple and then the U.S. dollar is weak as well or selling off. Well, right now it's just changed. The U.S. dollar <laughs> is the weakest and Ripple just um, moved to the upside. But um, but yeah, so man, like there's a lot to cover and I don't want to bore you guys with a lot of fundamental analysis. But, you know, one thing I just I'm going to let you guys know that. You know, even when trading in this type of environment where there's so many overlapping themes that can influence, you know, price action, just keep in mind that really having good risk mitigation, money management, and just applying your technical analysis is really what's key and really what's most important in environments like this where, you know, any headline could shake you out of a position. Um, you know, there's so much happening in the world that, um, you know, right now, like it, it's going to be kind of, it'll be hard to sort of um, analyze and assess um, the impact of all of those different um, themes and narratives, you know, on financial markets. But one thing we do know is that we're in earnings season. Um, the earnings data that came out post-market was pretty interesting because we had FANG stocks. Um, well, we had Google, you know, which is Alphabet. And we had, let me just go to this right here. Let me just uh, pull it up because we had Google, um, their earnings data came out and it did not go well for them. Let me just go to the daily chart. And uh, we can see here that look how far that it's expected to gap lower all the way down to here. So then let me just do this real quick. Um, Let's see how big of a percentage drop or percentage gap that's going to be. Okay, let's see. So that's like a 4.4% gap lower, you know, to the downside. Almost 104, almost 105 points lower on their earnings data. Now, what happened in their earnings report after hours, post-market? So we can see here that um, it, with both top-line data which is the earnings data and bottom line data, which is the revenue that it did not meet expectations. It actually uh, fell short of meeting its estimate. And this is the reason why we're seeing, you know, a repricing of Google or Alphabet stock um, 100 and some points lower. But, um, you know, of course, you know, this is definitely tech driven and that's, and this move to the downside was also exacerbated by what we saw yesterday with Tesla. You know, Tesla sold off substantially, but um, but yeah, we had Alphabet earnings come out, and then we had Microsoft earnings come out that also wasn't too good as well. So let's look at Microsoft, and let's look at its earnings data, and we can see that for the earnings data, it was it was okay. Um, it wasn't the best. But it, it did, you know, of course, we did see earnings per share go up and revenue did report well. But um, there are some other issues that um, served as a problem. But as you can see, um, you can see that it's expected to open a little bit higher, gap higher for today. The pre-market value for Microsoft is at 279.89. So then that's, um, that's pretty good for this. And I think it's sort of helping when it comes to the indexes is sort of helping to provide a more positive positive enthusiasm in the market uh, you know with microsoft now of course 
yesterday's earnings data was still pretty decent across the board. Like, of course, Google was like one of the only few that did, you know, come out poorly. But for the most part, earnings data has been pretty solid and pretty well. So then for today, we're seeing this rebound or what's expected to be a rebound in our stock indices after selling off for the past few few days. So then this is with our equity markets. But um, but yeah, like um. I think I'm just going to end it there. I'm not going to carry on with too much fundamentals and bore you guys. I'm going to pass the mic over to Melvin, and he's going to finish off with doing some top-down analysis as we wait for the Wall Street Open to occur. To occur. And, um, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass the mic back over to Melvin. All right. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to look at one pair in particular. Um, going to do some decent top-down analysis on this one. And, um, you know, there's going to be multiple lessons that you can get from this one um, pair, you could say. I'm going to cover quite a bit um, just to help you guys out. So, all right. So then let's go up to the weekly chart. And the first pair we're going to look at is um, Euro Aussie. Uh, let me do that right now, Euro Aussie. And, um, you know, what? I'm just going to... Um, clear up everything for now all right so right now we're looking at the euro aussie and we're currently looking at the weekly chart and you know what we can see here is that price corrected and it found resistance at this particular level right here let me add this right here and uh, let me change the coordinates uh, okay, well, let me just do this. <laughs> boom, boom. Okay, so right around here at a dollar and fifty. So then, what do we typically call this level for those who may be familiar with this 1.500000 level? What do we typically call those type of levels? Um, yep institutional level yep institutional level banking level yeah those whole number round number levels are what we call institutional or even psychological levels like what adam um just mentioned so we see that price pushed up and it corrected into this area of resistance because we do believe there are sellers positioned right here um the market environment is bearish on the weekly so then there's a possibility we may see price push down and retest the lows there there's that possibility however um, we will only know what's going to happen if we drill down a little bit deeper and of course we do see that stochastic is oversold so then there also is a reason to believe that price could be you know wanting to expand higher as well but um anyways let's drop down let's go to the daily all right. So then right now we're looking at the daily chart. And as you can see, price has corrected up into this area right here. And, um, you know, just like we said before, what we typically want to see is a three way pullback leg A, leg B, leg C expansion to the upside up into this area of resistance. And now we see this pair beginning to slide to the downside. So price is hitting resistance and stochastics right here is overbought and whenever you see that whenever you see price hit a strong level of support and resistance or supply and demand and whenever you see it you know overbought or oversold in this case it's overbought then what you should expect is some sort of consolidation or topping on a smaller time frame so what we're going to do right now, we're going to, um, of course, I'm going to delete this right here. And uh, what we're going to do is drop down to the four hour chart, right? So now let's do that right now. We're going to drop down to the four hour. Okay. And right now we're looking at the four hour. And as you can see, price is giving us this type of um, pattern where it wants to create a lower high. And a potential lower low and um let me um place this right here this neckline you could say right here 
So what we want to see, this is what I want to see. I would like to see a clear violation of this structure level, you know, before I commit to really trading this um, move to, you know, the downside, because, you know, it's pretty apparent price is hitting a nice key structural level. But, um, you know, I would like to see that. However, there are times when we may not get a nice clean break. We may get a little small break. Like in this case, we do see this candle. Well, let me um, bring this down. So right here, this level, because um, it does look like it's, well, yeah, not exactly. We don't really have a break yet. But uh, what I would like to see is price break this level to the downside and then correct somewhat before we consider selling. So in other words, let me just draw in some levels. So we have this descending trend line resistance right here. But what I would like to see is a small break to the downside and then a correction right back up to this area, maybe to test this trend line as resistance, you know, right around here. And then from there, we could look for a nice sell trade. And we can look for a sell all the way down to where we have this hidden structure right there. This one hesitation candle right here in this area is where we can look to close out our position. So then, you know, somewhere right around here. So, you know, that is what I will look for on Euro Aussie. I do believe right now, since we do have the Euro selling off, that um, something like this could very well take place. So then um, this is the Euro Aussie. This is something that we're looking for on this particular pair. Remember to wait for price to violate this structure. We want to see that first. We want to see price create a lower low and a lower close. And then for price to retrace and potentially form a lower high right here. And then this is when we'll look for our opportunity to sell. But remember, just like with most setups, we will like to see bearish confirmation. So this is a, another tip for those who may not know. On four-hour corrections, what we typically do, we, we either drop down to the one-hour or the 30-minute time frame for our trigger confirmation. But um, we'll definitely go over a few examples uh, for you guys in a future webinar. Well, as a matter of fact, let me see if I can find something here for you guys. Um, Okay, let's let's do this one right here. Let's let's do this pullback right here. And um, as a matter of fact, let me um, I'm going to start. I'm going to do the replay too. I never did this before. I'm going to do the replay too. And um, what I'm going to do is show you guys how I would enter this trade. So then, right here, we see that price looks like it may want to correct lower. Stochastic is overbought. This on the four-hour chart. We're looking for a correction, um, maybe to retest this structure area right here let me draw this right here retest this structure right here and then we can see price bounce i i don't know what's going to happen but let's see what happens so then we get this reaction right here and let's see what happens okay price pushes a little bit further let me drop down to the one hour okay all right so yeah all right we do see what could potentially be a three-way pullback right do you guys see it? Say yes or no. And I, I'll let you guys, um, I'll tell you what the three ways um, are. Okay. Greg said yes. Dan says no. Okay. So let me do this. Okay. Let me just draw it in right here. So um, as a matter of fact, I'll just draw it like this. Okay. So then right here, this is leg A. This is leg B. And we're in, in the middle of leg C right now. So then let's see what happens. So price pushes a little bit lower. We get this leg C right here. And now what we need to see is price break and violate this structure right here. Let me just draw this in. Let me delete this. Let me draw this in right here. I'm going to change the color a bit. And uh, make this. Let me make this. Um, let me make this see if I can get another color. Okay, I'll make it that color. So then, if we see price break and close above this level, then we'll look for a retest and then we'll get in that way. So, then, in other words, what we want to see 
is price break, retest, and then we'll look to buy. And then we'll trade this to the upside. So if this is the end of our correction, we can, of course, define where our targets will be. The target will be somewhere around here near the 127. And let's see what happens. Okay, so price goes a little bit further. And we're still okay. So we get this break right here, and now we need to look for a retest. And with the way this candle exploded to the upside, we may not get the retest that we want to get. So, of course, we have this structure right here, and we have this structure right here. So, you know, you can look for a pullback right here if you want, and then enter your your trade or you can wait for a pullback all the way down here it's up to you but um you know for the sake of this example i'm just going to wait for price to pull back to this area let's see um i'm just gonna go long right here and the stop will be behind this swing low right here target up here Okay, so that'll be like 1.7. So let's see if we get a pullback. Okay, so price pulls back, test this area. You know, as soon as it tests this area, the zone you could have entered in if you want, um, or you could wait for a deeper correction is up to you. But with this strong momentum candle, it probably would have been wise just to get in right here. Um, as soon as as soon as price as soon as price hits this structure level right here, you know where this pivot is. Um, you, you could have got in there. Let me just as soon we get in there. And um, we'll modify our stop right here. So that gives a 1.6 reward to risk. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so yeah, we would have kept our stop where it was. Price, it would, it would have triggered yeah, it would have triggered it. But you can see that price went all the way up and hit the target. So then, you know, that's how we typically enter with, you know, on our trigger time frame. We wait for that three-way correction. And then from there, we wait for the bullish confirmation. But yeah, we're going to cover this a lot. But um, as you guys know, there's other secrets of the trade that there's other secrets to this trading thing that um, we definitely going to reveal in, in the near future. So um, yeah, there's a lot for us to share. But I hope you guys benefited from today's session let's see how those other pairs are are going let's um of course drop down to or go to the euro pound let's see how that's going urgbp uh right here okay yeah so then this is still moving we still want to wait for the correction um that's what we're going to do so we just have to wait for price to start correcting uh before we consider you know entering this trade um and uh, what else did we do? Um, the Kiwi. Yen. I think we did the Kiwi Yen. Yeah. Kiwi Yen. Okay. So right now, price is testing this area right here. Let's drop down to the trigger time frame. Let's go to the 10 minute first. Okay. So yeah, we're starting to see that C leg form. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, let me delete this. So, you know, we have leg A and then leg B. And now price is forming the leg C. And then as soon as price forms the leg C, let's assume that price goes all the way down here. Then we just wait for price to break structure to the upside and then uh, wait for the retest. So, you know, that's all you have to do. Um, you know, in trading, you're just going to do, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over again. But if you know what you're doing, you can make some very good money. So, um, yeah, that's the goal is to help you guys out. So, yeah. So I guess we can open it up for questions. Um, now that we're, you know, just a few minutes before the wall street to open, like, do you guys have any questions? Is there any instrument that you would like for us to look at and analyze? Is there a particular stock commodity? Uh, whatever that you would like for us to analyze for you. Um, of course, this is what we're here for to help you guys. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just let us know if you guys have any questions. If not, then we can end um, pretty early for today. Um, I believe the same thing could be happening, um, you know, 
but let me see how the Aussie Yen's doing. Um, I know we got stopped out on that one um, for a one per one percent loss, but we can see here that we have our three way pullback here: leg A, leg B, and leg C down here. So we just have to wait for price to break to the upside. And um, I may get in a little bit early, but you can see here that we was just stopped out. Our stop loss was at 91.17, uh, I think 91.17, yeah, and we were just stopped out and then price pushed to the upside. So, you know, that's the benefit of keeping your stop a few pips below this swing low, and we didn't do that. Like, I was more concerned with, with uh, my reward to risk ratio. <laughs> I wanted a high reward to risk ratio trade, so then that's the reason why I kept my stop tight. But if it was behind the swing low, we would still be in the trade as of now. But um, I do think price is going to um, push um to the upside from here all right so yeah i don't think we have any questions so i guess we can um close out for today now let me just give you guys a tip before we move on wait for price to break um let me let me just remove this i'm just going to make it a little bit easier for you right here the midpoint of this congestion area right here if price breaks this area, then look to um, look to go short. So in other words, wait for a break, then retest of this area right here. Like all it has to do is break the midpoint of this consolidation or congestion. I'll explain why later. But um, did that, and then we place our stop maybe a few pits behind that. Then um, yeah, we'll be good. We have a, a decent, decent trade. Okay, can you please take a look at E-mini NASDAQ? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, we can take a look at it. Okay. Okay. So, there. Is it right there. So then, yeah, yeah, we can go to, I guess, the daily. I know um, the NASDAQ was testing the lows, you know, right here. It's really, you know, selling off. But, um, yeah, it, well, yeah it's, yeah, it's open. Well, yeah, this is the futures. Yeah. This yeah. Futures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then um, what we see right here, we see it price testing, um, you know, of course, this support area right here. So then there's a possibility we could see a rebound in the NASDAQ. However, we do have this. Um, candle right here for those who may know um you know what this candle is again we see it all the time um it's something that you should ingrain in your head over and over again when you see this type of candle then you know that we have hidden structure, structure. it's called a hesitation candle but um there's a possibility that price may retrace up into this area and then sell off mm -hmm. now what i'm going to do i'm going to drop down to the four hour OK, so, yeah, this is the four hour chart. We're still in a bearish environment. And uh, what we may see is, you know, price pull back to test this area right here, you know, before we see a slide up. Remember, whenever price corrects, this is even for stocks. We typically want to see a three way pullback on our trigger time frame. And then from there, we'll see, we can see price um, continue selling off even, you know, for this Nasdaq. However, we are at a key area of demand or support so if you do sell you're not going to shoot for extended targets you're going to target the lows that's if you do consider selling but um let me see let me drop down to the one hour chart okay so yeah this is the one hour chart and um yeah we'll see how things are going to turn out um i'm thinking we should see this like this is leg a leg B, and then we see another leg C up into this area, and then a sell-off. However, that may not happen. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what price gives us. But as of now, because the one hour is bearish, four hours bearish, daily is looking bearish, then we want to stay on that side of the market. We don't want to fight against momentum. However, we have to be somewhat careful because we are at an area of demand so mm -hmm. um anything can happen um so yeah yeah 
yeah, I think we're going to see, you know, just, you know, some positive upside, like, you know, a short period of correction retracement before our further tumble lower, because everything is pointing to um, higher interest rates. And we know that the NASDAQ um, doesn't, you know, do well um, when interest rates are moving to the upside, especially real, real rates or real yields. So, um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm expecting this to eventually tumble lower, but just like never said, we can, uh, we could see another, um, you know, retrace from here, test this level, and then look for our opportunity to sell, um, this particular, you know, NASDAQ e-mini futures, um, to the downside. And we could probably close it out or even possibly just scale out if you just want to hold it, but you can just scale out of that position. Um, or you can just completely close it at the lows right here at this area of, of support. So, yeah, but um, it's pretty, you know, oversold. But like like we've said before, uh, we can't assume that just because it's oversold that it has to reverse or move to the upside. It, it could just mean that there's a lot of selling pressure in this particular, you know, instrument. So then that's pretty much what that can indicate. But um, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, yeah, I don't have really um, too much to say on this one. Um, you know, this one right here, it can go either way. Like what I would typically do for the NASDAQ, like for me, I would wait another day. Like I would wait for this daily candle to close to know for sure um, what may happen. Um, as of now, I, I don't really know. All I know is that we're at this area of support or demand and price can go up or it can continue down. However, you look at all the time frames based on direction of confluence, we have a bearish bias. So, you know, if you are going to trade this, look for opportunities to sell on a pullback in price, likely to this particular area right here. You could look for a four hour pullback or, or you know, something, you know, to this area and then um, see what happens from there. Seems like price is almost there right now, but, um, you know, we'll be looking for a sell. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Are there any more questions before we move on? Um, all right. Yeah, Rob, thanks for coming. Thanks for checking us out. I guess that's it for our session for today. Um, I guess I'll let you guys go. Uh, for those who are in the group, you guys know how to reach us in our public group chat. And um, as you guys know, also, we're sort of like we are moving gradually moving things over to our discord channel so if you haven't, so if you haven't gotten in uh, make sure you get in um soon of course we're going to keep it open for quite a number of days and then we're going to move everything over into that application um so um you know we'll let you know when that happens but as of now we're going to send um posts and setups to both groups or both channels you could say both tools so then um you know, you may not think there's an urgency yet, but uh, we, we just encourage you guys just to get in to the new system because we definitely want to do a lot with that. There's a lot of things, a lot of categories you want to add uh, for you guys. But um, I guess that's it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for coming to today's session. We really do appreciate you guys. And as we always say at the end of every single meeting, remember to always count your blessings, not your pips. And uh, we'll definitely see you soon. And um, if you guys want to, you can you can just chill for today. Just relax. Um, I'm not overly confident with some of these setups. So, you know, if you want to relax and wait for better opportunities, you can. Um, however, if I do decide to enter another trade, I'll definitely let you know. Um, Aussie Yen, uh, we got nicked. Uh, you know, we had a, a loss, a, a, a 1% loss on that one. But as you guys know, we've been on a nice, nice winning streak. Um, you know, both in the group and within my own personal trading, um, it's been pretty, pretty good. So, um, we'll see, but thanks again for coming guys. We really do appreciate you guys. And if you guys need help on anything, you know how to reach us. All right. Have a blessed day. Talk to you later. All right. Get them by.